Hey everybody, Negro Legend here. Just want to let you know that this is a stream I did on 8-27-2019 of me talking about Greedfall. So you can watch the live video on YouTube and on Twitch as well in the, in the backup log. But I try to do this video and make it a little more uh, concentrated and compact by trimming out the fat. So the video you're about to see is that. And I hope you do enjoy, and I hope you are excited for Greedfall as much as I am. So please, thank you, and enjoy. And I hope you can forgive me for the long ex explanation of why I like it so much. We're going to be talking about Greedfall. And what is Greedfall exactly? Well, I have a bunch of links and videos up already. And we'll pretty much be going down one video at a time, or we'll see how long it takes if I even get through all the videos. But honestly, we're just going to be learning all about Greedfall. And I'm going to be trying to inform you guys. This video will be also posted on the YouTube channel. Uh, and hopefully it, get, hopefully it gets some kind of reception. If not, then that's just a damn shame. What is Greedfall? Greedfall is this upcoming fantasy medieval, medieval fantasy role-playing game developed by Spiders and releases on September 10th. Although they need to fix it on their website because it says October 9th of 2019 and it's got me kind of concerned. So Greedfall, like I said, it's developed by Spiders, upcoming uh, fantasy role-playing game set in the 1700s, well, themed 1700s. And uh, basically, well, let's find out right here. <laughs> I got the Wikipedia up. Like I said, this is basically a 101 on you guys, teaching you all about Greedfall. And another thing is, is that when we get to the YouTube sections and some of the articles, well, pretty much we're gonna go bit by bit and how I feel about the game and why I am truly excited to get this game. And I pray to the maker that it does well. If it does, then this could possibly be the new Bioware of our time. And we'll get to that in a second because there's actually an article that talks about that. How Greedfall could be the game filling in the void left by Bioware, the dark side of Bioware. Anyway, without further ado, let's check this out. So, I got the Wikipedia page up. Greedfall is an upcoming action role-playing game developed by Spiders and published by Focus Home Entertainment. So, as you all know, Spiders has only made a couple games. That's Bound by Flame and Technomancer. And they had mixed reception, mediocre. I've actually played and beaten Technomancer. It was an okay game. It had some pretty interesting story elements and pretty interesting characters. But the combat and the world building itself was pretty flat and dull. And I think Greedfall hopes to, uh, Spiders hopes to remedy that by listening to what the fans said about the previous games and actually making a robust everything pretty much all around. So, uh, and I only played Technomancer once. It, it, you can do multiple playthroughs, but I'm sorry, I, I, I don't plan on doing it. If they do a sequel to Technomancer, which I kind of hope they do because I see great potential in, in the stories and the world they build in that, and I hope they, they flush out what, you know, what made Technomancer bad and then they expand upon what made it good. Like I said, it was a very interesting uh, futuristic techno role-playing game, like steampunk, well, not really steampunk, but uh, it takes place on Mars, so it's got some scientific magic element to it. It's really bizarre. But anyway, the game is set in the 17th century style fantasy setting. It will be released for Microsoft Windows, PS4, and Xbox One on September 10th, 2019. So Wikipedia confirms it, that it's coming out on September 10th. I don't know why Great Falls page says October 9th. It maybe that's no, it says all consoles there. So, what is the plot of Greedfall? Which is something pretty interesting. It's not just let's just say the whole entire world, at least from a lot, at least on the surface, right? On the surface level, it seems okay. It seems like a pretty down to earth, like like a thing that can actually happen to us uh, in our daily lives. So, Joey You're Wheeler, take it see away. see what Joey Wheel is all about. All right, good. He's a good guy, plays Yu-Gi-Oh, loves his life. Anyway, the plot, as said, as such, an island paradise has been discovered by colonial forces from several distant nations from fictional lands, but with magic and monsters. It's already got me excited. When, when you add magic and monsters in, in this type of setting, I, I'm already hooked. You play as a neutral human who recently arrived at the island. So when they mean neutral, they mean your alignment is neither good or bad. I don't know if that confused anybody. If not, then good. Uh, but yeah, you start out blank slate and everything. Uh, able to ally yourself with either the native elves who inhabit the land or any of the four nations competing to conquer and colonize the new land. So that's where the factional system comes in, which is really freaking cool. And, you know, it makes me excited to see how they work out the factions. And then, you know, you can help the natives. You can pretend like you're Christopher Columbus, the pilgrims, and you have Thanksgiving with the natives. Or you could just take over the land and, you know, wounded knee and, you know, 
the, the, the Democrats do their things with not uh, paying off their debts to the Native Americans who just lie and cheat and everything. But anyway, that's, that's another topic for another time. So it's up to you to decide the political landscape of, of the island. And what I mean by that is that you're going to be the spokesman and the guy, obviously the main character. So you're going to have to do, you're going to be relied on heavenly, uh, heavily, uh, heavenly, of course, heavily on how things play out and decisions you'll have to make that will shape the course of the land. And that's super important and it's freaking awesome. I'm glad that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a simple simple plot. So it doesn't really describe why you're on this island. Well, back in your homeland, there's a disease that has spread throughout your, your uh, I guess the continent or the land or at least the place where you're at. And basically you're set off to find the cure, which supposedly I guess it's on this specific island, which I don't know if it, it's been explored at all. Maybe it has and you're just going on there to see if you can find the cure. Maybe the elves have some kind of magic. A specific magic or healing properties or some kind of hoodoo voodoo shit. I don't know. Uh, the gameplay. Let's talk about the gameplay. The player alongside other settlers, mercenaries, and treasure hunters. Those are talking about your party members or maybe some side NPCs or some people you help along the way. Explore a remote island where the locals who are fighting off invading settlers are protected by supernatural beings. The game includes combat, diplomacy, and stealth. The player's decisions influence and affect the game's story as well as the relationship between the different factions established on the island. It was announced the game will run at 4K HDR for, okay, I don't care. But, well, it's still pretty cool. 4K, 4K HDR for Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. So, a lot of cool things. Um, I, I guess you, you, I don't know if you're the first person to come to the island. Sounds like you're not going to be. And there might be already some dispute or some uh, political stuff happening, some combat. It might just, this is why I kind of like how this game is starting. It kind of just throws you in. Some bad shit's going down, and you got to take care of it. And uh, when we get to the trailers and stuff, like I said, we're going to break it down. I'm going to do that for the first time and actually break down a trailer and explain why this seems really cool that they went this route and, and why it gets me excited to play this game. But I just want to give you the Wikipedia, which is a really weak page, Wikipedia. Who, who the fuck did this? Don't they have, they have, like, scientists review this shit. Get this shit underway. Anyway, um, so that's kind of, like, the basic understanding of Greedfall. Now it's very on the surface with Wikipedia as of right now, so I'm sure it'll it'll come up with more information once the game has been released, when people actually are able to play it uh, or review it, however way you want to talk about it. But this gets me really excited, and when you actually see the gameplay and stuff, you'll understand why it gets me excited. So we're gonna go to the web page right now, just to kind of give you an idea of what to expect, because it's a very, very interesting uh, wallpaper or background they have, it, it gives you a very cool idea of what you're getting yourself into. Uh, it's, it's almost like a book cover, which these artists are amazing. They do a fantastic job. So let's give you an idea. Okay, so we got the display capture there. So I'm actually going to make that bigger. So you get kind of an idea of what it looks like. So, like I said, you got the main protagonist there who's dressed up as a colonial uh, style character. Which is really cool because we don't get too many RPGs set in that time. I think the only RPGs, believe it or not, is either Assassin's Creed 3 maybe. Because, you know, uh, the Miniman, the Revolution, stuff like that. And colonialism, if that makes sense. And, uh, believe it or not, Fable 3. Fable 3 was one of those games that also tapped into the colonial aspect of things. Because you have the same type of clothing um, and everything. Uh, same style. So, so ultimately gets me excited because when I see this game... It really reminds me of Fable, Witcher, and Dragon Age Origins all together. It's one giant threesome, and they all had a child together. So it gets me pretty excited. So as you can see, it says October 9th, 2019. That's incorrect. I don't know how they fucked that up. But as you can tell, uh, let's see here. You pre already get some bonuses. You get an Adventures gear pack, which is pretty cool. You know, some, uh, some basic shit. You get a Fire Sword, which gets me excited. You get some interesting armor set, and then a gun. So like I said, there's a lot of... So think of it as Witcher, where you got bombs, traps. And think of it as Fable, where you got you get to use the combat, the guns, the the uh, the magic. Which you can use magic in Witcher, but it's very... Uh, it's characterized by Geralt himself. Uh, but Dragon Age, how you can do combat, magic, and all kinds of stuff. And of course, of course it's got Knights of Republic feel to it, because you start out as three classes, and it, it grows and develops into something much bigger. It's quality over quantity with this one, which I really appreciate them doing. Okay. 
Uh, so this, the cool thing is they got a bunch of trailers. I, I never really watched the Companions trailer because I didn't want to be spoiled on how the factions and stuff work. I kind of want to be surprised. The last trailer I saw was the gameplay overview. And then, of, of course, Gamescom 2019 just passed, and I wanted to learn more about that. So, the old world is dying. The continent is polluted, overpopulated, and plagued by a deadly, incurable disease. Its weary population grows desperate, but there is a glimmer of hope on the horizon. An island remote and hidden has been discovered. Tear for day, for day. Friday, a land spared by the Melichor Plague, a haven of life, wild and untampered by mankind, is the promise of riches, but also represents the best hope for mankind to find a cure to the Melichor. On the hunt for the cure, explore a fresh new world, as alongside settlers, mercenaries, and treasure hunters, you set foot on this remote island sweeping with magic. So, you get you get the idea of how cool this looks. I mean, so in the background here, you kind of see the map here, and it's pretty sweet. So, let's, let's kind of uh, bring this back. So, like I said... This makes me really, really excited to have a game like this that we get to just play another great fantasy role-playing game. There's not really many that get released that are that are worthy of our time. A lot of the times they don't do that good, um, or they do really good, like Witcher 3 or, or Skyrim or something like that. It's very far in between, though. Uh, we haven't gotten a Fable game. You know, this could be... This could fill the, the Dragon Age void and the Fable void that we've been neglected. And the Elder Scrolls void because we haven't gotten entries from those games in a while. Uh, so that's why I'm really hoping this does what it needs. Now, I don't want to put that much pressure on this company. It's not fair to do that. This is their third game. And they have twice the budget with a, still a small team. I think at least at most 30 members. It's kind of insane. Uh, so it's great to see Focus Entertainment giving them a shot. Uh, a third chance. I don't know if it's just, they've been published by the same company the whole time, but now we get to see something. We get to see them working with the budget they have. So right now we're gonna go through the over. The, this is pretty much the, the trailer I've been looking for to kind of give you like a one-on-one -on -one basis on uh, on how this game actually plays out. Now, one thing that I have not seen yet is how you interact with the other players not other players the other npcs in towns like what mainly the world building itself you kind of get a glimpse of how you talk to npcs and what you want to say but i want to see it like fully explored in in cities and kind of going from a, one quest to another and giving it a good overview of, of of straight gameplay you know like how they usually show it uh, at gamescom or e3 or pax a really in-depth playthrough and they did that for Gamescom but it was in the wilderness and I want to see it in town I want to see it in town I want to see how the people react to you what they say what you can do if there's mini games or social hub or whatever you know that, that helps with the the social interaction and the world building you know why it kind of gives you an idea of why you should give a shit about these people to begin with you know that's really important and to me only a few games open world even though it's a semi open world have done this Skyrim Breath of the Wild Red Dead Redemption 2 those are the three big ones to me that really uh, has your choices influence and what people and Fable surprisingly, people react to quite a bit in that game. So this is the uh, the Greedfall gameplay overview trailer, which came out August seventh, so this month. So it's fairly new, pretty new. It's within the same month. So this is about a four minute thing. So we're gonna go bit by bit and why this is exciting. So uh, bear with me. You know, there's gonna be some pauses here. Um, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, well, we'll go through the trailer itself, and then we'll rewatch it and break it down, okay? So here we go. All right. Welcome to Greedfall, the core role-playing experience by Spider Studio. Explore the uncharted island of Tir Fredi, which holds promises of secrets, treasures, and adventure. From the very beginning, you're given the freedom to make your character unique. Decide on your appearance from a range of options before diving into your starting skills, attributes, and talents. And so the day has finally come. My royal fledglings are leaving the nest. Though you can specialize, you're free to mix and match between all disciplines, ensuring you're prepared for all that lies ahead. Combat styles are varied. Quickly rush in and out of the fray using magic, 
Hold foes in place with stasis and unleash devastating spells before your enemies can even land a blow. Armor up and knock down enemies with slow but deadly two-handed weapons. Or parry your way to victory with a fast flurry of your rapier. If you really don't want to play fair, an array of traps, bombs, poisons, pistols, and rifles serve to offer even more control of the battlefield. During particularly intense fights, you might want to utilize the tactical pause option. This gives you unlimited time to select from your actions, spells, techniques, and potions to use on the target you wish. All styles of play benefit from the use of Fury, a potent resource that lets you unleash some of the most powerful attacks in the game. Greedfall features hundreds of pieces of customizable equipment, armor, and clothing letting you delve deep into creating your own look and play style. Many of these are specific to the island's distinct factions and may double as a disguise if subterfuge proves necessary. During quests and exploration, overcome challenges using stealth, deception, and combat, or a mix of all three. Struggling to gain entry to a guarded building? You're in our territory. The obvious solution might be to just kill all the guards in combat and loot the key, but that kind of decision making could have messy consequences. Over time, you'll develop skills that offer alternative solutions. Knowledge in the sciences might allow you to craft explosives to blow out a wall, while a talent for lockpicking can gain a less destructive entry. Remember, Using force is not always the best way to defuse a situation. That drunkard is the only son of the Prince d'Orsay. Diplomacy is often an option, though be mindful in your choice of companions. What have you done with my madam? A poorly timed outburst might ruin your chances at a peaceful outcome. You're acting like a beast. An ever-growing cast of colorful characters from a diverse range of factions joins you on the island. Who you bring with you into quests and combat is up to you as you compose your party of three from the companions you've met so far. Develop your relationship with each party member. And I hope that this singular appearance makes me more attractive to you. Undertaking personal missions relating to their unique backgrounds, the strongest of friendships may even lead to romance. Thanks to your party's different, often conflicting beliefs and motives, it won't always be possible to please everyone. Ignore someone's needs for too long, and they might not stick around, becoming antagonistic in the worst of cases. Political diplomat, or battle-hungry warrior, zealous hunter, or champion of the natives. No matter what you choose, forge your own destiny in Greedfall, releasing September 10th on PlayStation 4. Okay. So that's it for that, and you can, if, if you're still there, people, if you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch, whatever, that's why I'm really excited to play Greedfall. That whole overview, oh, overview trailer was, they did a good job explaining what needed to be said and what needed to be done. So now, we're going to actually break it down bit by bit, and you know what? Let's give them a round of applause right here. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm going to give him a round of applause for that. Actually, let me do something here. I need a white background here. This shit, this ain't happening. Okay, so we got a good gist of Greedfall even more now. Now we're going to go through the trailer and break it down a bit of why this is super exciting for me. And this overview of trailer might just be the breakdown that we need to understand why I'm so excited about this. This video has over 2 million views, folks, and 7.3 thousand... Uh, 7.3k likes and 385 dislikes. That's like three to one, basically. <laughs> that's that's a crazy amount of uh, likes percentage compared to dislikes. So, people are really excited for this game. I think this is going to be this is definitely one of the most anticipated games of the year. I believe it or not. And you know what? Spiders is doing a good job marketing it. They're doing a good job making it interesting. I mean, there's like this special gravitational pull that I have towards this game. It's really. Uh, alluring, alluring me to it. It's very alluring. So anyway, let's start from the beginning here. I'll bring this up. Okay. Welcome to Greedfall. Okay, so this gets me excited already 
this is such a cool thing. I mean, this is a, they did a great job with the trailer. I mean, just starting out with you on a boat. Um, obviously, you don't start off on the boat right away. You, like I said, you start off on your home homeland, and then you kind of are just you're just doing your daily routine, and then some shit happens, and you're sent off on the boat, and you're getting the fuck out of there. And I know it's going to be one of those things where it's not going to take you too long to get off the island. It's not. I don't know if the prologue is going to be that long compared to like Red Dead Redemption 2, which had a pretty long prologue, which some people didn't like, but I liked it a lot because it was very uh, cinematic, not cinematic, but very uh, had a very climactic feel to it and some emphasis on the character building and stuff like that. So hopefully they they do a good job in the intro to kind of explain why this is important and not. But at the same time, they don't they don't make you feel like you're stupid or something. Like they have to mansplain it to you or just sit there and just pretend you're like some kindergarten kindergarten kid who's never learned math the first time in his life so you know fantasy role playing stories you know what makes you them so engrossing and it's very very interesting to see how this plays out so let's continue role playing experience by spider so from the get-go we see um i i guess i i don't know are you, are you the care i think you're the character on the right or you could be in the middle. This is actually interesting. I don't know. They all look like main characters, but I think the guy on the right. I don't know if you can actually put facial tattoos on your character. I'm not entirely sure, but if you can, that's excellent. But it might be you on the right because I've seen that as a deal or a pre-order costume. So it's very possible. Um, anyway, your new explorers to a land, and what what makes it that exciting is to. It, this is what's great about stuff like this. You and the and the character in the game are. First time ever exploring this island. He's never been there, you've never been there, and you get to create that story and live out his experience for the first time, which makes it even more special. Studio. Right, Explore the uncharted island of Tear Freddy, which holds promises of secrets, treasures, and adventure. Okay, so this right here, we're gonna go, we're gonna stop right here. So you can get an idea of what environments you're gonna be going into. There's so many different kinds. As you can see here, we got the woods. We got kind of outdoorsy with the rocks building and stuff like that. Kind of like how Skyrim was. Uh, and you got some old old school ruins in the background. I mean, just look at this. This is a beautiful shot of lighting, volumetric clouds, the grass, fo the foliage density and stuff. It just looks very well designed aesthetically. It looks very well polished. And it just looks so lifelike in the way, you know? It, that stuff's hard. So here's a, here's a city shot. Kind of gives you an idea of the architect. You know, you got some brick buildings, you got some arch, some archways and stuff. It follows that kind of uh, the 1700s. So, you know, archways were made in like uh, Romanesque and uh, Gothic periods. You know, but uh, you know that stuff keeps going, right? So it kind of gives you like some cobblestone, brick buildings. So things are getting modernized, and I'm sure. Are there any lamp posts? I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure there there are lamp posts, maybe. Um, but anyway, like I said, there's going to be so many different places you're going to be going into the game. And it, it reminds me of Skyrim because there's a bunch of different cities in that game, and they're all vastly different. They all have different factions. They're all different belief system, different people ruling them. And they have... Well, I'm giving Skyrim a little too much credit. Some of the some of the people that rule the, uh, the, the different cities or, or towns are kind of boring, and they don't have much to say. That you can't really do much. But you still learn a bit about the background of the place and the civilization, how things are run. Um, anyway, let's continue. So this, like I said, this gets me really excited. Going to many different places on the island, it's not just one track, you know. You don't, you can't really get bored. And each, it's semi-open world, so they're all going to be linked together. So you're going to have to, like, transport your, like, quick travel maybe or walk there and have a loading screen. I don't mind the semi-open world aspect because... Uh, it makes it feel like each environment is very special in its own way. You're going to be doing a ton of stuff. You're going to be exploring. It makes it more memorable. I don't mind seamless adventuring, but, you know, it, that's, it turns into like an open world game that's kind of like that. A lot of the times, the environment's pretty much the same all the way through. Um, and, you know, you're kind of like on one giant island. There's just so many different place, uh, types of environmental changes. Um, Dragon Age Inquisition is a, is a semi-open world game that made each area feel special in, all, in its own way. Although some were a bit too big, like the Hinterlands was way too big. But it was definitely pretty awesome and amazing to see how grandiose the environments could look and everything. They made it very aesthetically pleasing to the eyes. 
So I don't know if there's a day and night cycle. Dragon Age Inquisition did not have one. They kind of just made it static. It was either day, nighttime, sunset, morning. They kind of changed it up, cloudy. I don't know if there's a day and night uh, real-time weather system, but I, I hope there is. Um, and the places you are just add a little bit more realism. But if there isn't, it's not a big deal. I don't mind that. But at the same time, I kind of want to see what each place looks like day and night. Uh, you know, throughout the day. It would be pretty cool. Um, and also, each each uh, environment you go to, each region or world, whatever part of the island you go to, will have different monsters, different ways of playing, and different probably different factions in all the different places you go as well. So be prepared for that. That gets me excited. That's awesome. So it's something new for you to play at secrets, all times. Treasures and adventure. So right here is kind of like the uh, spoilers, the beginning of the game. So it th this is what I also love. It throws you in the thick of it right from the get-go. These motherfuckers bring this crazy monster from this island. And it might lead to the plague. Maybe when you kill the enemy, it, its carcass just splats all over people and they get infected or something. I don't know. But you're kind of... Oh, it's raining outside. So you're kind of in the thick of it right from the get-go and you have to fight this big asshole. It's, it, I love that, how it doesn't hold your hand and it's just like, oh shit, handle the situation, you goddamn newbie. And you gotta, it really puts you in the thick of it. Almost like a Dark Souls situation where they throw some crazy ass bosses in the beginning to kind of really prepare you for what's yet to come. And the bosses are hard, challenging, but and, and difficult, but it requires a, a clear mind, a, a collective mind, and you know, you reap the rewards once you beat it. From the very beginning, you're given the freedom to make your character unique. Okay, so this is also an amazing way of doing something. This is creative as shit. This guy is trying to draw you, right? It's kind of, it's, it, that's what I was talking about. It's the blank slate of character building. Your guy is literally starting from nothing. And of course you see a default character over there, but obviously you're going to change how he looks. A lot of games will go with a default look, but at the same time, this whole, this mirror, this image of this painter painting you gives you something to be excited about. You're going to be creating a, an image for this guy to paint and for everybody else to see you in the world, which there's no way to do that. Or it's, it's a seamless process. There's no other cooler way to do this. It's amazing and creative, and it, they actually took the time to make it interesting. A lot of games, they kind of just throw you into it. You're just like, oh, this is my character. I look like this. There's nothing creative. You know, you just kind of just wake up and you're like, all right, here we go. Uh, Dragon Age did that a lot. Uh, even Knights of Republic did that a lot, you know, it's, there's no, it was just like, oh, you just wake up and you're just going, you know, but, uh, sometimes they add a little creative element. They're like, oh, uh, what do you look like? What do you like to do or something? You're like, what's this all? They kind of, they ask you questions pertaining to your identity, which is a cool way to do that. I really like the seamless way of character customization. And this is probably one of the most seamless ways possible. So, like I said, this is pretty cool. I, I love it. And like I said, this is a very ama amazing, aesthetically designed image. It, the concept, the aesthetics, and just the, uh, the resolution of it all is just really spectacular. Yeah, you can tell I got, a, you got, I got an erection for this game. Hype train, bitches! Decide on your appearance. Okay, so as you can see, we, uh, De Sar Sardine, that's not his name. I don't know if this is, eh, I guess it is in English. I guess your, gay, your guy's name, you can't change his name. Which is fine because I guess for dialogue reasons, because uh, your guy speaks and everything. So, you know, kind of like they did with Dragon Age and Mass Effect. They call you, sh they never give you your first name. They always say your last name. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's fine. Or they give you like some, some surname or nickname. You know, uh, the Champion of Kirkwall or uh, Sarah Hawk or Commander Shepard or something like that. So as you can tell, we got the gender, which is obviously male or female. You got presets, the face, hair, blah, blah, blah. Pretty much the same stuff we'd be expecting. But, I mean, look at these character models. These, you know, in the beginning, I was skeptical how this game looked. I thought it looked a bit, a bit cruddy. I don't know what he has on his face. Is that like a birthmark or something? That's kind of freaking me out in a way. I don't know. If it's like some edgy thing they're doing. Some weird shit. But it looks great right here. And this is on the PS4. Okay, remember that, folks. This is on the PS4, and it looks pretty damn good. Um, so, on, I'm getting this on PlayStation, and it's going to look a gazillion times better. I can only imagine how it looks like on, on PC. Uh, it, it gets me even more excited to see what they, what they do. Maybe there will be some ray tracing involved. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, this image is, like, fatly stretched. 
There we go. It's, it's a lot better. So we get the uh, customize. Let's Friends, see how they from a change. Range of options before diving so female, into your star female, pretty cool. Okay. Now, I don't know if there's like a like a Paragon Renegade system in this game. There's probably not, but I do know that you'll be making some important choices in the game that reflects on how the, what kind of ending you get. I know there's three different kind of endings, they said. Um, probably a good, bad, and then the best ending type deal. You know, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, quality over quantity, I guess, as you can say. But, you know, it offers uh, multiple pathways, of course. It leads into three pathways. It kind of gets railroaded in the end, but that makes sense. That's how it should be. Um, but this is, like I said, this is really cool. And, like, this, look how different Before this character is compared to this character. Whoops. Let's Friends, try that again. From a so, here we got, I, I think, an Asian individual. She looks kind of Asian, but maybe she's not. Maybe she's just got those eyebrows and just some... Range of options. I don't know. But they, but they look great, though. I mean, they look really great. And these are presets, and the presets look good. Mass Effect does not have good presets. They suck. We're diving into your... Oh, it's raining now. So, here, we get to the starting classes. Now, this is something that's super important that might draw people away. This is a big deal because some people like quality over quantity and that some people like quantity over quality. I am the one that likes quality over quantity. I'm a person who grew up grew up playing Knights of Republic and I loved how they picked three different classes. You got Scoundrel, Soldier, and I, I can't remember the other one. Bounty Hunter? Hunter? I don't remember. But they had three different classes, and then it, it and then it, it just expanded into this giant skill tree to where you can put how, play the game however the fuck you wanted to play it. You can put it in blaster, melee, dual wielding, force powers, healing, this, this, and that. Like it was crazy mix and match. So we got the warrior, the technical, and the magic. Very exciting to see that. This you guys should be excited as you can see. You get the starting skills. You get recommended attributes and recommended talent. So this is magic. Starting skills, Divine Magic, Rain Stasis, One-Handed Heavy Weapons. So Magic users still use combat. They still use physical moves. They still, you can consider them battle mages, which is great. Your guy's just not a piece of, just some wuss who can't ever use a goddamn sword. Like, you, you expect me, a Magic user, to never know how to use a, a freaking sword or a dagger. At least to hit somebody with it, you know? Some games just don't really want you to do that. Or it takes a long fucking time to dual class. But this... They kind of combine some classes into one, which is great. Divinity Original Sin 2 is the game that does quantity over quality. They have a lot of different classes, and they do a bunch of different shit. But in the end, it's like, well, I just want... Why is there so many? Like, I, it takes me a while to decide which one I want. And I'm like, no, I just want it to be basic as shit. And simple. Keep it simple. Why does it have to be so complicated? So recommended talents. Science intuition. So it kind of gives you a great idea of what you're going to be getting yourself into. So take your time on this stuff as well. Don't ever rush it. This is super important on how you want to play, but by all means, you can just be the best fucking hybrid. You could probably be a warrior tech and magic user, however way you want it. Some, you could be more warrior and some tech, and then maybe uh, half magic or something. And that's great. That's flexibility. That's what you want players to do. You want them to experiment and get through the Starting levels that way. Attributes. Okay, so we've got the attributes. This is kind of like your, uh, kind of like how in Skyrim you got your like agility, strength, and probably aim and magic or sight or so whatever you want to call it that kind of help you give you some uh, passive abilities so agility increases fury generation all damage inflicted in melee combat so this is be good for a warrior attribute required to wield the best one-handed two-handed swords i'm gonna be a motherfucker who uses two-handed swords oh my god it's probably gonna cause the stream to shut off this crazy crap's going on right now i can't handle that oh well you just skipped through really fast so let's continue on so as you see here this is the beginning this is your guy Literally learning how to play. This is character building. He starts off as a peon, as a pleb. This stuff is super important. If you don't believe me, then you should probably pick up a book or two and learn what true stories are. You start out as the learner and then you turn into this freaking badass by the end of the game. But hopefully it's always challenging, not just crazy. Not crazy, not level balancing or uh, level scaling or anything like that. But just they have it to where it just... it. It gives you some kind of challenge, you know, where you're not just one-shotting literally everything, you know. But at the same time, this is really good introduction. As you can tell, there's some great textures. There's some tessellation, some great quality textures and everything. Tessellation is a big thing in Dragon Age 2 back in the day, so I wonder if you guys remember that. So, you know, this is great. This looks like to be your mentor, who's also one of your party members in the game. Spoilers. Um, that will help you. So it's kind of going to be neat that you have your teacher with you. 
as you're growing up as a pupil, who's someone, he's going to be someone you're going to be always looking up to, I, I see, will probably be your moral compass. And you always want a moral compass in your stories or in your games, however you want to do it, because you've got to have some kind of guiding light. Um, you can't just be completely influenced by somebody. There's always got to be a sensei involved. The dreams are leaving the nest. Though you can specialize, you're free to mix and match between all disciplines. So here you can see how, this, okay, so this is the skill tree. We've got skills, attributes, and talents. So there's a lot of stuff here. This is kind of like a Knights of Republic or D&D-S thing, or uh, Dragon Age especially has skills, attributes, and talents as well. So the skills are going to be the stuff you're going to be using in combat, the things that really do the damage. And it, and it may look like there's not that many to, to do. And there was somebody, a video I was watching, that um, that's saying that he had a concern about the variety of combat. Folks, this is my biggest pet peeve of people who ask for that. If you have so much freedom to just do whatever you want, then you're never going to really find your true focus on what kind of character you want. You want to be somewhat railroaded to where it seems like it, it gives you enough freedom, but it doesn't give you too much freedom to where you're just like never figure out what your major is or what you're you know in a career or something. Like, what if I just wanted to be only a warrior? You can probably do that. And Or if you wanted to be all warrior and have some science abilities or tech, you want to be okay at shooting, but just a badass at melee, or vice versa on anything else. What if you wanted just to do mainly melee, and you know, you just wanted to beat the shit out of your opponents, but sometimes you just don't have the time to do that, and you want to lockpick a door. You could have some skills in that. That could be under talents as well. Uh, skills, I think, is just mainly in combat, but, you know, not entirely sure. But, you know, it, like I said, it's quality over quantity. And when you have great gameplay and, and fun combat mechanics, it doesn't matter. Um, that, that's what Technomancer lacked. It had kind of something similar to this, but anything I did in Technomancer was nothing significant. I didn't feel cool at all. It was just very metal, muddled, very mundane. But now, the combat if the combat is good enough, then it doesn't matter because it's just fun. You want the combat to be fun, and then everything else is supplemental, you know? Do I want my guy just to throw a hailstorm and then all of a sudden he's sliding on the storm with some slide move that I have to press this and that and that I can do a backflip with a sweep kick? I'm like, this isn't a fucking fighting game, goddammit. I know it says an action role-playing game, but, you know, let's, let's, let's keep it kind of on the level here, all right? It's still an RPG at its finest. There's still a pause menu to what you want to do and what spells you can and uh, things you can encounter and do. I mean, in Natural Republic, there's a lot of different... For example, Natural Republic has a lot of skills that you can do. But shit, I don't want to put all skills in all of these things. There's so many in it. And I, at the end, I only had a handful that I really used. You know how many different power mo attacks there are? There's critical, there's, there's power attack, and there's flurry. I only used flurry pretty much the whole time. I never even used a basic attack in that game. So it's like... You know, it, it gives you variety, but it's, sometimes it's kind of just useless. Everything gets kind of swept behind, so I really appreciate the quality of quantity. And you know what? If the gameplay is fun, if it works, it's polished, it's not boring, it's exciting. Like how Fable 3 Fall had some really interesting combat. It had a mix and match, and you can do all the cool shit you want to do. And that's fine. That is perfectly fine. As long as it works. As long as it's work. It's working. And it's not buggy or glitchy or any of that crap. So... You have, variety is the spice of life, but I think there's enough variety, okay? If that's the guy's only concern is the variety of things you can do for skills and stuff, well, who knows? Maybe they'll add some content or DLC, but look, there's a lot of locked stuff we haven't seen yet. This is just a pre-build, and he was playing a, a demo himself. It's not going to give him all the active skills he could use or spoil everything. So let's continue. So this is insane. Now, there is some serious serious specs going on here this is like your profile your character sheet very important to to look at and to keep on the fly by and uh look at constantly this is your main character already looking cool uh, the armor looks amazing aesthetically all those neat little tidbits the little bags the scrolls a little light to have on your side and some cool embroidered armor and a little little scarf in case you spill your spaghetti so you can see here the level 24. So this is kind of an up, an up, up and going character who's done some shit. So as we can see, the skills mainly in attack and defense, barely in technique, and none in magic, and that's perfectly fine. That's great. Level 24 still have it maxed out that they attack and defense, which is great because the game's going to have you playing a long time, and you can max out every skill you want, talent probably, but it's going to take you a long damn time, and you probably get bored of the game by then. But if not, fucking awesome. 
And it has not been confirmed that there's a new game plus, but I wouldn't doubt they put that in, or, or the game is just requiring you to play through on a different type of uh, playthrough. A different way of enjoying the game, which I really do hope. I want to play these RPGs over and over like I did with Dragon Age and Mass Effect and all that good stuff, and Knights of Old Republic. So, uh, relationship level, as you can tell, you're going to be also having... These are party members, and then these are factions. So the party members, she has Vasco, Kurt, Afra, and Petrus. Suspicious, suspicious, nice, suspicious. Of course, you're going to try... You're going to get one guy's favor, and everybody else is going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? You're, you're insane. One person's going to be like, yeah, eat that heart. Eat the heart of that lamb. Everybody else is going to be like, whoa, this guy's fucking nuts. And they can get suspicious, and then obviously they can rebel against you and try to kill you or leave you or something. They might not like you in the end. So it's very important to uh, play the character you want to play. This is how it would be in real life on a tabletop game, on, on a true CRPG and old school fantasy role-playing games. Not everybody's going to agree what you're going to be doing, and I'm glad for that. Because you can't always be the hero that people like. You're the hero that people deserve. You know, not the hero they want, that they deserve. So in the end, you're going to get results done, and that's all that fucking matters in a game like this, right? So, there's factions friendly with the natives. So this is a character who's trying to make nice, trying to side with the natives. Maybe the natives have been segregated. They've been bought for slave. They've been taken from their lands. Uh, the resources have been pillaged or they've been turned into slaves or something like crazy. I don't ever, you know. If I hear that there's any type of slavery in that faction, I'm never, I'm never joining that fucking faction because then their technology can't go that far. So, as you can tell, nice, suspicious, and friendly. Also very excited to see that they have how much that plays a role in the game. If they have it on a character skill tree like their skill, a character sheet like this, then that gets me pumped. So over here, you're going to see the melee and major two-handed and shot and defense in general. This will give you all your basic stats and what you're good at and what kind of resistance you have, how much damage you do, and then just general aspects there. That's very exciting. Sure, so let's continue. you're prepared for all that lies ahead. So, look at that. These people are just fucking talking. I guess this is a group of enemies that just fucking went, out with, went in with a bang and just threw some shit, which is really cool. That offers many different ways of playing the game. Obviously, you want to be smart on how you do this because I bet you anything, this mob will probably kick your ass if you're not too careful. Combat styles are very... So, he threw a bomb and then he went for the one to shot them as well from the get-go. So, if you're a far-range class, you're going to want to get that damage up and do as much as you can. Chip away at that life meter. And as you can tell, above their life bar, maybe you can't see it, but there's little shields up there for their armor armor class or armor rating, so you're going to have to get that down first. And some will be more resistant to other things. People will be resistant to heavy or uh, physical or magic or guns. So be careful and learn your enemy. So as you can see, we're out in the wilderness fighting some beasts that take place that live in this kind of place. I mean, this is just beautiful looking. This looks amazing. And it looks really cool. Some heavy hit two-handed sword. Of course, we got another woodsy area, and you got a teammate with you, and then we're throwing some magic spells. You know, keep your distance and using magic. you know learn how to fight Both these enemies. So as you can see here, we got a group of enemies. Don't want that mob density. This character is getting his ass kicked. So like I said, just take your time and learn to be patient. These are these are difficult games. They should not be easy in every encounter. They should require you to have a thick, uh, a, a very clear mind and understanding of what you're getting yourself into. So being a troll is not going to help you. And unleash devastating spells before your enemies can even land a blow. And as you can tell, I mean, just look at all these different combats and spell. Like, look at him. He's all the way back here now. You can teleport. You can go from one place to another. You're going to be all over the fucking place, kind of like how it is in Dark Souls and, and, and uh, Witcher or Dragon Age or something like that or Breath of the Wild. You're going to be all over the place, folks. So try to get creative and learn how to handle these situations, okay? You want to try to be careful as Armor possible. Up and knock down enemies with slow so, I mean, look at that. Look at that heavy swing. That's great. There's some weight to the combat. It's not just some, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Whereas it's like, you know, some two-year-old made the combat with no impact or weight at all. This is great. As a two-handed person, you're going to feel the weight of that sword, and it's going to cause you to get hit a couple times because you're going to leave yourself open with heavy swings like that. But if people get in your way, you're going to fuck them up pretty good. Uh, Technomancer lacked the weight of combat. It was very on the surface and boring. Like I said, there was nothing very impactful about it. So I'm hoping this tickles your fancy, you guys. It's good to have some weight. Because then it gives it the, the fight more meat to it, some more oomph. And you feel really good when you win. You're like, you gotta wipe the sweat off oh, your virtual brow. Two-handed weapons. Or parry your way to victory with a fast This is pretty cool, you know, and doing some cool combat moves and getting creative and then you roll away, kind of like really in Dark Souls. 
And also, this is a Dragon Age thing or a, a Witcher. You're planting traps and everything. I mean, look at this. This is cool. Bear traps, as they get to call it. And you're going to lure them right into it. And sometimes this might be necessary. It might be necessary. Like I said, you got to get creative. But that's, if you don't master in traps or get the basic understanding, then you're going to have to kind of... Uh, Get really creative with your single class Array build. Of traps, bombs, poisons, pistols, and rifles serve to offer even more control. So it's really cool. We get, get to see a cutscene here. What's going on? Some character kicking some ass. Uh, and also, the all this game is completely all done in mocap. That's how much budget they had in this game. You guys don't realize how much motion capture costs and how how uh, what is it tiring it can get and how exhausting it can be. Motion capturing is probably one of the most difficult things to do in video games and just with anything. It's very difficult to get it done. And it's very expensive. And you got to hire mocap uh, stuntmen, basically, and, and directors, and just all that crap. It, uh, so I'm very glad that they're going balls deep with the budget. During they are not pulling around. Intense fights, you might want to utilize see more the mob density here. Option. So this is talking about the pause menu. This is done in Dragon Age and Knights of Republic. Um, also in Mass Effect, you can pause it at any time you want uh, to do the skills you want, but it's mainly done in Dragon Age and uh, in Knights of Republic, where it just automatically pauses. But uh, of course, you can turn that off, I bet, and you can just pause it yourself because sometimes you just need to think about what, you're, what the next turn is going to be, kind of like in a D and D tabletop game. So it's great. This so here we're going to see it just do some major damage here. Spells, it's going to do a stace or a storm attack, and it's going to do. Stun them all. all to give you some heavy hits there, which is great. Now you only have to worry about one person the use of fury, for the time being. So we got the bomb combo. The we got a good slam there. The it's very exciting. And then this right here is a mini boss in the environment. There, are, There's one in each, uh, each part of the level. So be careful. They could just be anywhere, which is really cool. They look very Freefall well designed. Features hundreds of pieces. So, the next it's thing is talking about armor and clothing, letting you delve deep into creating. So, they're talking about customization. You got you guys are seeing how you can change your hilt, the type of blade, the color, the armor. What do you want a shoulder piece? Do you want some steel? You want some leather? You want a scroll? Your you want a little pouch? You want a light? Style. You want to change the Many color? I mean, faction designs and everything. This game is going balls deep with that. I love it. All the different customization choices that you are able to do. Dragon Age Inquisition had great customization on how your character looked. Every character and party member had its own style of, of customization and what armor types they could wear. It was fantastic. They did a good job there. And uh, Mordhau, for example, allows you to pick many different weapons. They give you kind of a slight, barely uh, selection of different hilts you can pick, but there's a lot of different weapons you can use. But... Um, and this game kind of expands on that much more because all the different weapons you get, they're, you're going to change their look. You can change the way the blade is, the handle, and just so much for you to do. It's so great how you can completely make your These character. These are specific like to that. the island's distinct factions. Like I said, you know, you're seeing the different factions disguise. here, so choose wisely. This is the native, the elven. So there's elves in this game. Subterfuge which is kind of crazy. During quests and exploration, overcome so, challenges using stealth. Seeing some. Uh, so we see some stealth right here taken out. The stealth isn't isn't something you're going to be doing every time. Don't expect to go stealth attack this guy the whole freaking time. Stealth is just used very seldom, I think. Used in dire situations or trying to get around something. Um, but I don't know if there's like some stealth skills you use, like some shadow sneak or anything that does like attacks, like parrying repost or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But if it doesn't, guys, don't let that beat you down. At least you get to use stealth and it's used for a specific reason. Or a mix of all three. Man, that health is not Struggling going to down. Struggling to gain entry to a guarded building? You're in our territory. The obvious solution might be to just... So, we're at the point where you're going to be talking to people and trying to uh, converse and decide how you're going to want to handle each situation. You're going to want to blow up a wall, you're going to want to negotiate, or you're going to order something, or you're going to pay off. Depending on what the skills you have and how your character is built, you're going to get pretty much different options or options taken away. This is very piss-poor option selection for you, so let's watch. But that kind of decision-making could have messy consequences over time. So as you can see here, reputation minus one that was on the screen there. So be careful. If you're attacking in one settlement and you're somehow aiding another settlement, they might not like you in the end. So that's a very realistic approach. That's kind of like Mountain Blade. You could be helping one nation, and then the other, the other nation will not like you at all. So choose wisely. 
pretty soon when you walk into the town, they'll probably and shoot you in the face. skills that offer alternative solutions. Knowledge. So look at that. Science level. So we're going to see how the talent build goes to see what type of stuff you can unlock and what options and are available to you. you to so just because of that, that science level one, she's able to blow up a wall. And look, your mentor is right there to witness the destruction at hand. Showing how much of a crazy bitch you are. Crazy motherfucker you are. But that's okay. Because he's there every step of the way watching you unfold and turn into this crazy, crazy person. <laughs> but that's one way to do it. You can unlock the door, you can blow up a wall, or you can just fight your way in. To blow out a wall, while a talent for lock Pretty awesome. Can gain a less Pretty cool. Entry. Remember, use so here, you can negotiate. If you have enough persuasion, you can talk to intuition. Amazing. So you're going to have some charm abilities you're going to need to have, some persuasion skills. Negotiate a ransom, all kinds of cool shit. I mean, this look how completely different this is compared to what it was in the beginning. Now that you've got some skills and some talents and stuff, you've got some cool, cool options to pick. And I'm so glad that they did it this way. Very exciting. They said that they wanted to make every decision you made something very special, something impactful. And also, they wanted every quest you do not to be boring. There's no more kill five birds, collect ten stones or some shit. They wanted every quest to be something unique and memorable, and that's 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 ambitious King right there. That's amazing. Not always the best way to defuse a situation. That drunkard is the only son of. So success successfully used intuition. So now she convinced say, them. Diplomacy is often an option, though. Be mindful in your choice of companions. What have you done with my madam? A poorly timed outburst might ruin your chances at a. All right. So this is during a cutscene. So you're going to be on the spot. If you don't do anything, then the decision is made for you. Your inaction may have caused someone to die or someone to really disrespect you. If you can't make a decision, they're going to really hate you. But if you make a decision and they don't like it, doesn't mean they're going to hate you flat out. At least you did something to try to convey something. Encourage her, convince her to stop, all kinds of stuff. You know, this is great. This is how you're going to get different endings in the game and everything. Peaceful Very exciting. Outcome. You're acting like a beast. An ever-growing cast of colorful uh, her mouth characters didn't move from a diverse range of factions joins you on the island. So like I said, now it's showing all the different characters you're going to get in your party. And like I said, they all have their own likes and dislikes, personality attributes. So get to know them. Don't fuck around with them. Talk to them. I respect what they're trying to do. And maybe you won't like them flat out, but maybe you can work out to some compromise. Who knows? In the end, you might just have you and your mentor at the end. Who the fuck knows? Who you bring with you into quest. So this is what I like too. You have a social hub, a place where you make a campfire and your peeps are just all standing in a weird half circle here i don't know if that makes entire sense you would think they some people would actually be standing but whatever <laughs> nobody really sits in knights of republic on your ship besides like the the captain or the the pilot everyone else is just kind of standing so i guess it doesn't really matter but they're at least in different parts of the ship anyway let's just go is up to you as you compose your part so you're gonna have to figure out who you want in your group and how you want things to be handled like i said Somebody was worried about that if you don't have the skills to blow up a wall or unlock something, if you have people who do have the skills to do that, then they can do it themselves. They can actually help you out and do it for you. And he had a concern about that. I don't find that a concern at all because you know what? If you bring a party, you could, there's a chance you could bring two party members that's, that still don't have enough skill level to unlock the door or blast open a wall or be skilled and persuade or whatever you want to call it. They might just ruin it completely for you. They could just flip it on on its on its freaking head. You might be screwed about that. So um, I, I don't think that's wrong. Uh, CRPGs do that all the time. Like in D and D, you have party members that have certain skills that can open certain doors, maybe locks, but not, maybe some maybe some people can't. Some can, or maybe they can do it, or their skill level isn't high enough altogether. So it might not even mean that. If just because they can open a door doesn't mean they can open like a goddamn like special chest that has the best item in the game or something you might have to have the max out lock pick rating so it, it really just depends so don't let that freight you but bring you down with that type of uh skill check and stuff like that if they do it the way i'm saying it it's going to be the best way because that just makes sense you know it's how it is in dragon age and knights of republic and pretty much any crp baldur's gate the divinity from the companions you've met so that so guy can far. shut up develop your relationship with each party member. pretty cool you can customize and how I your characters look and everything okay so this is pretty much the end of the video it talks about you know romancing and not fucking with your teammates agreeing with it compromising and then it kind of talks about your decisions in the game way heavily on what you do and how the game is played 
So that pretty much, I guess that's the thing we need to do. I guess everything else is uh, fine. We don't even have to go through any other videos or anything like that. So that is kind of Greedfall in a nutshell, folks. Uh, if you have any questions, just please leave comments down below. And I appreciate if you ever stop by the Eco Legend stream. If not, if there's anybody there, that's okay. Um, please follow me on the Twitch. Let me know what you think about Greedfall. Are you getting it? I will be getting it on day one, and I'll be streaming the shit out of that game. Because that's a game that I'm going to spend a lot of time doing. Of course, Link's Awakening comes out like a week later. Well, two weeks later, I think. So, you can get it on Steam uh, for 50 bucks, But there's probably a sale on Green Man Gaming. So, just look at your options. Don't buy it in a hurry. Uh, just look to see if you can get discounts. 50 bucks. Uh, this game looks 50 bucks worth to me. Unlike Control, which is a 10-hour game. $60. No thank you. Uh, but get it on consoles. Test it out. I hope it runs well on all, on all platforms. I really do. I, guys... If this game does really well, then this is going to be the Bioware killer. This is going to be the Dragon Age killer, the Witcher killer, probably. I don't know. I'm just overhyping it. But this is a game that needs to replace the Bioware void that that they have left, the stupid wake. So, Greedfall, I wish you good luck, and thanks, everybody, for stopping by. And I hope to see you on the island looking for a cure for the plague.